Maximum Health with your host, Dr. Ken Gray. Dr. Gray obtained his master's in both acupuncture and oriental medicine from the Atlantic Institute of Oriental Medicine. Dr. Gray enjoys both being a physician as well as being an educator. His unique approach to holistic healing has taken him abroad to lecture in Germany and treat sports professionals in Hawaii and France. He is co-author of several books on food therapy. His office is in Jupiter, Florida, where he has practiced for over a decade and where he resides. Now it's time for Maximum Health with Dr. Ken Gray. Welcome back, everyone. This is Maximum Health Radio Quality Living with yours truly, Dr. Ken Gray, holistic physician. We thank you for joining us every Friday at 7 p.m. on 88.9 FM, WQCS, National Public Radio, NPR of the Treasure Coast, and also worldwide via WQCS.org, and PRX for those of you that like going on there and getting podcasts and everything that's available. Uh, reaching me, that's Dr. Ken Gray, G R E Y dot com. And as always, we have wonderful guests, meaningful guests. We are, uh, our endeavor here at Maximum Health Radio is to keep you in tune with what is truly healthful, wellful, <laughs> keep you willing to explore. Um, and, and look past what we think is uh, is healthcare and health and well being. It's uh, it's really something about that that all encompassing existence. And um, so we we today are featuring the idea that we are one with the earth. What we do to it comes back to us full fold. Um, and there's a project underway right now. Uh, and I have for you three guests today, three amazing individuals um, working on something called the People of Yellowstone. It's a place that actually came into being through pressure, through volcanic creation. It's a co-creation with vol- volcanic eruptions sculpting and molding uh, parts of the earth to give us what is now such a magical and mystical place, a place that is uh, was once um, managed and inhabited by the U.S. Cavalry, but now it's, uh, it's really managed by just civilians, people like you and I. Uh, probably better than you and I in some instances because they dedicate their lives to the earth and to keeping it beautiful. So in that sort of feeling of under pressure and for joining us, again, that's a a classic but uh, meaningful song, Under Pressure. And, And we're talking about the people of Yellowstone. So to start off today, we have... Steve Horan, a dear friend, uh, I consider him family. I've, I've uh, been involved with his family as a physician for many years now, and he's the photographer, and this is his brainchild, the people of Yellowstone. Correct, Steve? That's correct. All right. Thank you for joining us. I know you've been traveling. You've been working very hard on this, and to see it come to fruition must make you very happy. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. It's been seven years in the making, and we finally have the book to the printer yeah. now, yeah. and uh, it'll be coming out on April 1st. Good. And you have the website, which is just filled with your photography and the writings and, and sort of insight into the, this project, which is uh, really, truly something to be seen, something to be read, something to be owned and, and to support, actually, too. It's, That's it's, right. It's formed as a non-for-profit sort of. No, it is not. No? Okay. How, how is it all being funded well, then? it seems like it's non-profit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We invested our money. Our oh, money, wow. Uh, okay. I'm self-supporting on this whole project, and uh, we have no pay scale. Ruth uh, W. Crocker, the writer for the project, has not been paid. This is a passion project. Mm. We feel that we have a message to say that people are very important in keeping the earth the way it is yes. and, and saving it for future generations. Yes. So the with your photography and the spo- the word that's ha- the wording that's going that's the author Ruth which we actually have on the phone with us. That's correct. She's so kind to share her time. She's en route to Cuba right now. She's at Miami Airport and she's giving us some of her precious time. She's actually on the way to another writing project. Ruth, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. You can hear us okay? Yep. Okay, you must be excited to go to Cuba. Is this your first time? Uh, yes. All yeah. Right. Yep. I think it's a great opportunity to uh, uh, get there while we can. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. And uh, I'm sure this project is going to be another wonderful one. But speaking of the, the project here that we're, we're here to discuss today, the people of Yellowstone, tell us about your experience in writing for that and, and why is this something of passion for you? Um, You know, I um, sort of fell into the project because um, Steve was photographing my brother, who's a ranger out in Yellowstone, Uh, and uh, when Steve told him he needed a writer, 
my brother said, well, my sister's a writer. And, uh, and then I, he, we talked, and then I discovered what it was, a great opportunity to just talk to almost 100 people about their experience of living and working and playing around Yellowstone. And so I had this, I had this great chance to hear first, first person stories of what it's like to do a whole range of amazing things. And it's been great. It's been a lot of, you know, a lot of, um, work, but a lot of fun. And, and, uh, Steve has been a great guy to work with. Um, in your listening, in the emotional tie-ins with these almost a hundred individuals, what stands out for you? What what was the common thread that you could say, or, or common threads, plural? You know, one of the most um, common stories is that several of people actually sort of just fell into their position. They arrived at Yellowstone from other parts of the country, you know, just kind of going off for a summer, and then ended up spending the rest of their career there, you know, and coming up through all kinds of different jobs. And uh, uh, so it's a place that is like, has a magic kind of magnetic attraction um, when you're there. And uh, I, I cannot say that there's one person who didn't like what they did, loved the place they lived in, and... You know, that's, that's pretty unusual. What did you, when you started this project, I'm sure it's, you started because it's interesting. It's something that you as a writer, as an author, wanted, a story you wanted to tell. But as it unfolds, as everything with art unfolds, there seems to be something that we as artists can take and say, okay, this is the end product. This is the message I really, really, truly want to get across. What would you like us to know? about this project and, and about Yellowstone? Um, I think it's a unique look at um, uh, an aspect of the nas- of national parks and, and preservation of this, you know, land that we really have to take care of because, it, you know, we don't have pictures of animals in this book. We have the people who are uh, taking, doing, doing the work behind the scenes and with the visitors. Um, and I think it's very important to, for people to realize that this is a fragile place that needs, it's wild, but to keep it wild requires um, dedicated people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Park Service needs that kind of support to, um, to keep these people in their positions and... Uh, I think that's the most important thing is that this is, it's not, you know, we can't take these, we can't take our parks, our national parks for granted in this land that's been set aside for preservation. Mm-hmm. It's an active process. So I, I hear you, to, to put it in a nutshell, for me, I'm hearing the words engage, and you want us to be better stewards and to take part. If, yes. if you feel that yeah. calling, engage, and, and overall, us as human beings are really best when we're being stewards of this planet. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, thank you for joining us. We're going to get into some of the rest of the project. It's an honor to to know that uh, you you're you've dedicated so much time. You're, you're basically an angel <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to do this. I'm sitting, I'm on the phone with an angel. I'm in a room with an angel. <laughs> but uh, no, this is this is great, and uh, we're going to get into more of it, and uh, we'll we'll continue to celebrate this book and it's coming to fruition. Thank you. Safe travels. Uh, enjoy thank Cuba, you. and I, I pray this uh, this uh, newest project uh, which you're working on is is also a great success. Okay, great. Thanks. I'm glad this happened. Yes. That's the way it's been on this project. Magic things happen. It's the way it's <laughs> supposed to be, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, thanks. Talk to you soon. Yeah, bye. So we're back here at the studio with Mr. Haran, sir. Um, yes. I look at your photography in this book, and you do something special here. You see with really uh, special eyes. And I want to know what you're looking for when you look through that camera lens. What are you looking for in these people? Well, it actually was a collaboration uh, through the subjects. It was lots of research and um, selecting who was going to be photographed. Mm -hmm. And 
we collaborated uh, between the subject and I, and what was most important to them, what message did we want to, uh, in the photograph, to say. Gotcha. And yeah, you had everyone from, uh, I know we'll have Ashia Mills, which is one of the people we will That's uh, interview here today. We'll also, it will be a call in. Tell me what stood out f with you, uh, with her. Well, uh, Ashia has been, uh, the picture that we have in the book is called Grateful. Mm -hmm. And she's connected to the park by transforming herself by moving there. And she educated herself to help other people understand the park. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we, the photograph that we created is in the, in the river called the Boiling River. Mm -hmm. And it's Mammoth Hot Springs. And water is life. And the picture of her standing in the river with mist coming up mm. is magical. Yeah. Grateful. That's a great, great uh, thing for all of us to sort of uh, meditate on and, and how we can be grateful every day. But it's something, her story is, uh, like uh, Ms. Crocker said, the author, one of those people that came <laughs> yeah. just with an idea of just yeah. coming, just ha no plans, and stayed. Right. And made a life there. And, and that's true with my brother, mm -hmm. Jim Horan, who mm -hmm. uh, went out west and uh, saw the Rockies and was transformed by it and said, I have to go out there and try to get a job mm -hmm. and see what it does to me. Mm -hmm. And he did. And he's moved out there in 1984. And since that time, he's an evangelist for the uh, wilds. And uh, yesterday he was up in Helena, um, protesting the giveaway of lands mm -hmm. uh, proposed by the new administration. Wow. You know, it's amazing how some of us, we can live our lives and uh, we can have this goal of what can we do? Where can we go? What? And, and, and some people just say, you know what? What can be done to me? What can transform me? And how can I be affected and improved by that? Right. This is one of those places that that can happen. It is. Yeah. Um, we have Ashia Mills on the phone, and we want to just... Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us, and you're joining us from Yellowstone? I am right on the edge. I can see it from my house, um, but I'm uh, in a little town of Gardner right at our north entrance. Great. And we were just commenting on your uh, contribution to the book and uh, being grateful, being a, a major part of that message. That's the truth. Um, life without gratitude... Um, is a lot less enriching, so it's uh, a goal and sometimes a challenge, but um, I really appreciated Steve for being able to capture that. Talk to, about, uh, talk to us about that interaction with Steve, the initial interaction, and this what this project says to you and said to you back then. Oh, it was so fun. Um, he just mentioned his brother, um, Jim, who uh, I've known for years, and he's a, a, a long-term character around here. And Jim had actually introduced me to Steve and, and introduced the project to me and said, hey, do you have any ideas on, on some candidates for this, for this idea? And it's a small community, and so I started tossing out some names of people who I felt like have affected the park, have been deeply affected by the park, um, who are... Um, players in our story here and a lot of them had already been mentioned um, again it's a, a small community and um, eventually it came back around to um, possibly photographing and interviewing me which I was honored by I didn't expect um, but it's been a really fun project to be a part of because of the meaning behind it because of um, trying to capture that essence of who we are and what we do and how this landscape informs us. Mm -hmm. And you have a few roles at Yellowstone, and, and I read where you're a teacher, writer, snow coach driver, and tour guide. <laughs> snow coach driver stands out because that's not something you'd think of. Um, being a very uh, attractive thing, it sounds cold, it sounds... <laughs> oh, the colder the better. <laughs> you like <laughs> you it, know? huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, in fact, we just got a, a, we're sort of in the middle of a, a couple of days worth of 
um, storms, blizzards kind of moving through. We got uh, maybe about 10 inches down here, but I hear a, a more than a foot up in the hills, and that's perfect. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out and skiing, actually, after this phone call. So, yeah, cold. Um, the park is, is never as beautiful as it is under a, a, a blanket of white snow and the decorations mm. that, that it creates, especially with the thermal features. So, yeah, I... I um, you know, I've, I've had those roles over the years. I have been a, mostly a stay-at-home mom here the last few years. My daughter will be in kindergarten next year, so um, that'll change things. But, um, yeah, snow coach driving to, to this day, um, outside of being a mother, I would say, has been the most challenging and the most fun job I've ever had. I wanna, absolutely I, I, loved every single day of it. I have to read something that's part of your story that really stood out to me about that. It says... Uh, Driving snow coaches was a natural transition. She loved the physical challenge of driving a Bombardier load of people through the park in winter when the air was so cold that any moisture crystallized immediately into prismatic sparkles and the snow-covered landscape looked like a, a bowl of whipped cream. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, Ruth and I were talking about how on a south run, we would leave Old Faithful, which is in a basin in a valley, and you climb up a few hundred feet, and we'd stop at, at Kepler Cascades and look back to the north, and the geyser basin, especially on a particularly cold morning, any eruption would send gads of steam into the air, and then it would get kind of caught in this thermal layer, and it would literally look like you were, it might be foggy, you know, you couldn't see two car lengths in front of you down at Old Faithful, and then you'd come up out of the bowl and look back down into this giant bowl of whipped cream, and especially as the rising sun hit it with some nice rose colors and and yellows and peaches and golds, and it was just a, a memory that won't leave me. It was one of the best parts of my day. Yes. Um, I think besides... You know, you, you mentioned Ryder, and there's another excerpt from um, your, your, a quote from your story that I also want to share with our listeners, um, because it says so much about what Yellowstone is doing uh, to the people um, and, and what it is, um, and, and why the people of Yellowstone is such an important project uh, to take part in, read, contribute to, and also engage with. But uh, Yellowstone helped me to reinvent myself, she says. One night standing amid the hot springs in Mammoth under the moon, I realized that the wind can't blow through me. I exist. I'm rooted in Yellowstone. My prayer for Yellowstone is that my gratitude for what is its mountain sentinels teach me will echo in my daily doings. I will honor its history and its presence, appreciate its details, and teach them to others. And that's what you're doing. Yeah, um, as much as I possibly can. Um, I hearing you read that that excerpt. I remember that moment um, after after having come out to Yellowstone my first summer, coming out of a pretty dark place of grief and and loss and um, solitude, aloneness, and feeling a sense of. Um, existence, you know, and, and not even permanence, just feeling, feeling like I existed. And I, that was an epiphany that that moment has stuck with me. That was over 20 years ago now. Um, but, um, yeah, I am beyond grateful, um, to have been sort of stumbled blindly into the role of guiding and teaching with, um, several different organizations and companies here in the park and have found that, that role teaches me as much as I feel like I'm sharing with other people. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, uh, you know, I, I take the role of guiding um, beyond just showing some interesting scenes. You know, it's about connecting with what we're seeing in a, in a meaningful way. I love it. I share that with my patients as well. I say it's, it's, it's always mutual. Um, the healing, the teaching should always be mutual. And, uh, and it is when it's at its best and when, we're, when we are at our best. So thank you for your contribution to this and to our, um, to our existence, to our society at large, our community at large, and, and uh, we really appreciate you here. Thank you very much. It's definitely been my pleasure. Thanks okay. for the work that you do. So, Mr. Haran, yes. 
you're you're coming to the new beginning and i would i wouldn't call it a finish line because you know uh, completing the book uh is just the beginning <laughs> another beginning right well, it's, it's like a birthing I'm yes telling you, it's yeah. been seven years and we did a number of edits and um took a lot of input from other people and we finally have it to the press yeah and uh looking forward to the book and having it as a symbol of what people can do mm -hmm. and how complicated it is it's just not a simple solution right that people are working years and years and spreading the word mm -hmm. about the magic of Yellowstone or any wildlife place mm -hmm. uh, that should be preserved speaking of the wildlife I mean there's tens of thousands of large mammal existing in Yellowstone they rule <laughs> it's really their home, right? That's right. So you talk about the people right. of Yellowstone. Yes. The, the people are serving these the, the, the it, ma these it's large. It's funny that you yeah. mention that because yeah. sometimes uh, people don't understand that it is actually wildlife right. and that you don't go up and take selfies with it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> yeah, I was talking. To, we uh, see that in the news. It's something I see quite frequently whenever I travel to. You know, there's this. Um, Island over there, they call Pig Island and the Exumas. And oh. my wife and I go there. <laughs> People always want to go up and feed these pigs on Pig Island with their hands. I'm like, and then they get bit and they wonder why they got bit. <laughs> it's, it's not a zoo, it's not a feeding well, zoo. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so I can only imagine what happens in Yellowstone with tens of thousands of bison and elk and, you know, all sorts of amazing uh, well, animals. Well, believe it or not, they had somebody take a baby bison. Uh, they thought it was in distress uh -huh. and they put it in the back of their SUV to transport it someplace. Obviously, that was a, uh, a death sentence for that um, baby bison because um, it was handled by humans. Right. And uh, it was a distress. Um, nature would take care of that. Um, unfortunately, well, fortunately, the wolves are there, mm -hmm. um, and they would take care of that uh, yeah. baby bison. That's, That's nature. natural yeah. predatory. Yeah. That's all. So, but uh, now, when do you know the extent of that story? What happened after they tried to save this bison? After that, nothing could be done. Nothing could be done. Yeah. No. They had to euthanize the... Uh-oh. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us just a few seconds about the, or a minute, or a minute or two, about the super volcano situation. I'm <laughs> sure you get a lot of questions about that. A few seconds. We have no worries. Yeah. Maybe $250,000 uh, uh, years from now, yeah. uh, it will blow. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have the uh, volcano, super volcano specialist uh, mm -hmm. in, in the book. Mm -hmm. And um, his story is fascinating. He was, again, transformed by in, in the uh, 50s. Mm -hmm. uh, finding out about the rings around the Yellowstone Lake. Right. And uh, it's a geothermal area is one of the most concentrated areas in the world right. for, to see that. Yeah, because you have uh, so many geysers. Or, or I heard this in this documentary, the <laughs> guy saying geysers all the time. I said, yes. it's geyser. But, um, you know, so that's the letting out of pressure. It's, uh, it's pressure. It's yeah. there, visible for everyone to yeah. see. Yeah. Uh, Old Faithful uh, is Old Faithful. Right. It comes at certain times, hour and a half. Uh, yeah. It blows off, and it's very predictable. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're monitoring uh, the situation always. Right. They actually have people that are amateurs that guide it, and it's their passion called geyser gazers. Mm -hmm. That was a new one for me even when I, when I was out there. Right. Well, I encourage anyone, if you haven't been to Yellowstone, go there. The, s the spectrums of color, the minerals, the bacteria formation, you know, uh, all of it, the, the geysers, the, the lakes, the, the, <laughs> the rivers. <laughs> I mean, there's just, a, it's a huge microcosm of what this universe has to yes. offer. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I, so I, I would say that uh, also support this book. Uh, you have a website. Share it with us. We have a website. It's called peopleofyellowstone.com. Easy to remember. All right, so thank you for joining us today. This has been spectacular. Thank you for uh, having me here today. It's so much appreciated. Yes. We're spreading the word through you and others. Thank right. you. Thank you. Another Maximum Health, quality living. See you next time. <laughs>